So to get, um, to get started today, I usually give a digital marketing tip of the week. And I woke up this morning and I thought, I have to share this story. And I, put, I sent it in my email. And so if you haven't read my email yet, or if, you're not, if you haven't read my email yet, go over, you'll get the whole story. If you're not on my list yet, go over to my website and get on the list because this is the kind of stuff that happens. I wake up and I say, I got to share this. Like I've got the strategies. There's things that are scheduled to go out. But today I wanted to share a story. I was talking with um, somebody yesterday and she does all the good work, right? She works with clients to help them get through things. She happens to be a health and wellness coach. She's, she's so, so knowledgeable, has a wealth of background behind her. And she said, which is exactly what I hear from so many people, oh, I just, you know, the marketing part, like it's hard and I don't want to feel selly selly and I don't want to feel like I'm, you know, doing things all the time and being out there. And I looked at the content that she had on her website and she had done the hard work. She was talking about the pain points of her clients. She was giving the information. She had all of the right work there. She had clearly worked on getting this content. And so we sat for a second and we thought about this and it's not unusual for, for for me to be in this situation with somebody. And we said, what if instead of, oh, I have to write a blog or, oh, I have to throw content up there. What if you sat down and really just thought about either somebody you had just worked with or somebody who you know are already thinking about that could use your help? What if you sat down and wrote them a letter, you know, a love letter kind of thing? Like, I know, dear Lavender, I know that you've been having a hard time because it's not easy to, da, 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 da. these days people, you know, people like you and me are struggling with, da, 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 da. and I know that, and that's why in, you know, in the work I do, I address da, 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 issues. And so to create an email, to create a blog, to post those things out on social, I want to invite anybody who might be listening and struggling with content creation to make a list of the struggles that your potential clients are having, just make a list. You don't have to solve them all at one time, but make a list because now when you're like, oh, what am I going to do? Just write that love letter because there's one person, I guarantee you, one person right now already looking for you and they're just waiting to find themselves in whatever it is that you're going to share with them. So if you're not showing up, if you're not sharing with them, you're actually doing, I've said this before, you're doing them a disservice. They need to find you. So not really digital marketing, but kind of a digital marketing tip this morning. For sure. For that, right? I said, (laughs) Lavender, just want you guys to know, like when I'm looking at the the camera, I'm looking at this like little sprig of lavender and I couldn't. Um, So today we have Jessica Miller. Let me read Jessica Miller's official bio. Jessica Miller is the CEO and founder of Brand New You Success Coaching. Jessica always trusts her guests. I'm sorry, her gut. I looked over here, I said guests. I'm looking at the chat too. (laughs) And my guests. I'm going to edit that part out. (laughs) Jessica Miller always trusts her gut and her guests, and it never steers her wrong. It told her to walk away from a successful 16-year corporate career and to listen To the early warning signs of a serious health crisis, it told her she was meant for more and she listened and she hasn't looked back since. Now, Jessica's the CEO of the highly in-demand success and life coaching business, Brand New You. She uses her internal compass to help others find theirs. Jess works with highly driven female entrepreneurs and business women to empower them to make money and step into who they're meant to be. She does it with humor, compassion, and the belief that everyone deserves to live their best life. When I asked Jessica, what, Jessica, what is her superpower? She answered, helping others see all that is possible for them so they can make money in their business, which is a perfect segue into starting this conversation. 
Tell me more about that superpower, Jessica. Oh, yeah. Thanks so much for the intro, Susan. Yeah, I always um, sort of joke with people that I, when I look at them, I see all that is possible for them without all of what I affectionately refer to as their mind drama. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we all have so many stories that we tell ourselves and so much of what we see in ourselves when we look at, you know, what, where we want to go or who we want to be. Um, but for me, I just see you with all that's coming to you. It's just one of those things that I think humans are so capable and the people that I surround myself with, I really, really pride myself on the people that I bring together, the people that run in the circles that I run in, because they're all amazing. And so um, many times my clients or even, you know, friends or colleagues will come to me and they'll be telling me something. And, and as I'm listening to them, I'm thinking, mm -hmm, I don't buy any of that. Like it's all possible for you. So, so that is really, it's a superpower for me. And if they're struggling with something money related, it's like, I can just sort of hone right in on that and help them see it. That's really what I help people do is see it. Like, how do you do that? Can you give me an example of that? I'm talking to you and I'm like, oh yeah, but, uh, 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 and you say. Yeah. So I'm, my superpower is listening. So my overall philosophy when it comes to being successful in business and making money, and this is true. I think if you're an entrepreneur or if you are in a corporate job, it doesn't matter when it comes to making money, it's really two pronged. One piece of it is the things that you do, like those practical things that you do to get your money in alignment or make money. And then there's all of the mental stuff, all of the things that you think related to whether or not you're capable of making money, whether you know how to do that, uh, whether your identity is in line with the money you want to make. There's all this mental stuff. And really like the killer combination is when they come together. Like you cannot have one without the other. And so Susan, even when you were talking about the marketing tips, and I'm sure you see this with your clients, and I will just say I have mind drama over marketing, so I can totally appreciate this. Um, we have so many thoughts about our marketing. When you sit down to write a blog or when you sit down to do something, there are literally things you are thinking that determine how you're feeling about writing your blog or whatever it is. And we, then we'll determine what you do. So if you're thinking, oh my gosh, I don't know what to write. I never know what to write or whatever. Yeah. It feels horrible. And the last thing that you want to do is like get into it and show up as your best self. You'd rather like, I don't know, let me go look at this thing over here instead of writing my blog and procrastinate because frankly, it's uncomfortable, right? The, the, all these things we're thinking are producing these feelings that are uncomfortable and as humans, we've gotten really good at not wanting to be in discomfort, figuring out how to not do that. So we do things that technically don't serve our goal. And part of it is helping people see the way that their brains are showing up in that instant with that thing that they're doing. And marketing makes money, right? So it's all connected, but it all comes back to that thought and how we're showing up sort of in that moment. So I just listen, I listen and I, I've been trained to pick up those little nuances that we don't even know we're having because it's us. Right. I, it's, it's so true. And, and I'm glad that you kind of brought it around to the marketing because similarly, the people that come to me know their area so well and they're so passionate about it and they're making real and valuable changes in other people's lives, but they don't always see their value. Yes. So when we sit down and we do the things, right, and we make the lists and we schedule them out, because sometimes it's just that. It feels like, and, and especially today, honest to God, if we didn't have to be on Facebook these days, I think things would be, but we have to be. That's the reality. But mm -hmm. Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, Pinterest, it feels like everything's out here and we have to do it all at once. And if you try to do it, you do one thing, you get distracted by the other, nothing gets done. And so it is important to know what the strategy is, know what your, what your own superpower is, right? What your messaging is, mm -hmm. do the work to know your own value, and then do the things that are going to take the roadblocks out of your way. So if you mm -hmm. have a list of topics, that takes out one of those roadblocks. And if you're, you know, and if you know you have a list, like I always tell my clients, if you have a list now and just keep it over there, you can just kind of keep your notes over there. 
so that you don't have to hold them in your head distracting you. Yes. And I think to the point of the list, so the lists are really, it's like the practical piece, right? And it's the same thing with when we think about making money. People, there's so many different perspectives and beliefs we have about money. Some people think it's really hard to make money. They come to the table, whether it's with their clients or with their business or whatever, they think it's hard. That's a thought that drives how they're showing up. Or they think, I need a list. Wait, I don't have a list. And then they start freaking out about the list, right? What do you mean like an email list? It could be an email list or it could be, um, I, I have to do X amount of things in my business because I believe this is how I make money. See, and so then I they see. come to the table with these ideas. Yes. But what happens is when you, when you can marry the tool, like you're saying, with the tool for the marketing or the tool for the making money, the practical piece, it actually then helps you drive the, the thought. So if you're the kind of person that like, for instance, every time you go to sit down and, and reach out to a client, for instance, you think nobody wants to hear what I have to say. Like that's your, that's your sort of limiting belief. Like I never know what I should say to people. And so your brain shows up in that way every single time. The first thing you have to do is recognize that this is happening, right? You're aware of it. And then you think, what can I think about this? that's going to help me do something that's going to get me out of this cycle. So for me, if I'm like, I'm every time I show up, I worry people are not going to, I don't know what to say to people. If I think, Oh, that's how my brain shows up in this situation related to selling or sharing. It take, I feel totally different than I don't know what to say. And so I just can't do anything. I need to keep researching, 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 researching until I can go live. I have a totally different feeling and thus the action that I take is different. So if I think, oh, there's nothing wrong. This is just how I show up every time I go to put something on social media, then I will have a different feeling and I will then do something different, like create a list. So the next time my brain shows up, I'm like, no, 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 no. I've got Susan's list right here. Yes. And I know this is what my clients care about. And now I'm off to sharing my stuff. Right? So it's this interface of how do you need to think and what do you need to do to create the result that you want? Um, and money is very, very loaded for people, right? We come with all these different things we learn. Making money is hard. It doesn't grow on trees. It's the root of all evil. Like all these underpinning thoughts that sit there that show up every single time. And we think there's something wrong with us when we can't do the thing. But it's really not, it's not us. It's just the thought. And some of this is habitual. It just comes up and up and up. So, um, so part of it is, is identifying these thoughts that are not serving you as it relates to your money. And you can feel it. Like when I think there's somebody out there who needs my help mm -hmm. or there's someone out there that I need to serve right now, my feelings about going out and offering my services or sharing on social media, all of those pieces related to money, it changes. Like I feel differently and do differently, do different things as a result. I get different results. Yeah, I, I, I see what you're saying and I, and I get it now and I'm going to back up for one second and then come back to here. So I wanted to back up and talk about when you said how, how you feel right to show up. I remember the time that I, implemented a mind shift, a mindset shift was when to get onto Facebook live or to speak in front of other people. I mean, I'm an introvert. This is, this did not come naturally to me. This was work. Yep. And I remember, I don't remember who it was that said to me, but they said those feelings that you feel like that fear and that anxiety, when you go in front of that, they're there to protect you. And you need to tell your head, look at, I'm good. And then look at those feelings as excitement because something's going to happen. And, and it's, mm -hmm. it's like the same as like, I think if you're skiing down a hill or you're diving into the water, like something's going to happen. My body's ready for what's going to happen, but it's not a, a dangerous situation. It's just different and, yeah. it's, and it's bringing it up. And then as far as the money thing, I think that there's, there's two things, right? There's the knowing that you can ask for money and ask for what you're worth and not downplay what you're worth. 
And then there's the other part because I'm technical, right? Like I love the spreadsheets. I love the analytics, but mm -hmm. I don't watch my money that way, which is a thing. But also like knowing how to present that to people. What are the packages, like the, yeah. right, the things. What yes. are the packages I offer? How do I, you know, tell people I'm on a call and I'm like, oh, well, I could charge you this much or I could charge you that much. I mean, is that the kind of thing you help your clients yes. figure out too? Yes, absolutely. So here's what I tell people about that, around their offers, their pricing, around sharing it with people. The most important thing you could ever do for your business and making money in your business is you have to be in full on belief about what you're offering. That means full on belief about your, the result you offer and the offer that you're offering. So I always tell my clients, if you are not in a tizzy about your offer, and if you're not in a tizzy about the result that you're going to get, help people get for themselves, you need to either do one or two things. You either need to change your offer or you need to change who you're helping. Because when you're in that mindset, when the thoughts that arrive in your brain, when you think about what it is you're doing is oh my gosh, this is amazing. Or, oh my gosh, I am, I can't wait to, you know, help somebody with this or everybody needs to know about this. Even saying it to a camera, right? You feel so differently and you do things so differently than if you're like, I have a six week program for $25 and it's really great. Maybe you should take a look at it. Like your, your brain is showing up totally differently. So the first part is you have to be in belief. If you're going to double down on anything in your business, double down on the belief you have in you helping your clients get the result for the thing that you're offering them. And what happens a lot of times when you're in that place is you are then compelled to tell other people and you're so sure of what their result is going to be that when people either don't want to hear it or maybe tell you no or they are not sure they want to pay the price for it your brain is like well, i must be saying it wrong <laughs> you know it shows up in curiosity for your client versus like defensiveness or some other thought that's going to come in and not serve you do you know what i mean so it is it sounds like a tiny nuance, but we've all been there in this thing, right? We've all been there when we've experienced something where our next thought is, I need to call Susan and tell her, or you need to talk to this person, or we just, we do that as humans, especially as women, because we like to share. Um, and we, our brain goes into this like negotiating, keeping ourselves safe thing when we are not in belief. Right. And that goes for our pricing too. We start to negotiate this pricing because our brain is like, is it really worth it? I don't know. Am I giving this to this person in the right way? You start to doubt all of these things and then you go into the negotiating. But if you're sure, there's no fear. There, you know what I mean? We're locked in. We're in alignment with that. It doesn't mean sometimes we don't have that. Oh, Susan, I think you're muted actually. You're muted. I was muted so that you didn't hear the dog barking. Okay. <laughs> so that was so good. So, so I have a question for you then. Yes, please. Around pricing. Yes. You have a program. Yep. It's going to be $300. Could be yep. $3,000. Sure. Yeah. Could be $10,000. Mm -hmm. Like, I think that the pricing points are hard for people to figure out. Why do you think that? How do you know what to charge? Like, so I want to be really, you know, I'm, I want to be excited about the value. I mean, I have a membership, a mastermind, a digital marketing mastermind membership, right? Mm -hmm. it's $88 a month, less like $20 a week mm -hmm. for like a ton of value. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So I think that's, that's amazing. Yeah. It could have been 25 a month. It could have been 880 a month. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, how do you decide where to put it? I did 88, just so you know. I did 88 because uh, I thought $20 a week was, was like no brainer. And Kathy Ripley Green told me it's double infinity, so I should go for it. Yeah, <laughs> I love Kathy. <laughs> yeah, how do you feel about your $88? I think it's a fantastic value. I'm amazing. Yeah. yeah. So, do you tell people about it? I've heard about your program and I've, I've heard it's amazing too. <laughs> I right? do. Yes. And 
probably not enough, I would say, because of all the other things that I'm doing, right? And also, it's an attraction kind of thing, right? It's we want to make sure that the right people are coming in because we're building community. Right. Mm -hmm. And so there are two levels, right? There's the people who are just kind of, kind of get, getting started out and yep. the people who have been working on things for a little bit so that these folks don't feel less than and these fe po folks don't feel held back. Yeah. It's nice. Yeah. So I'm just going to use your $88 as an example. This is the perfect example of like where this practical and mind piece come through. Yeah. So from a mind piece, you're right. There is no right price. So this is what I just wanted. This is like the PSA for everyone. There is no right price. You can charge whatever you want. The key is it has to be in alignment with you, your belief, and the value that you offer. So many people go out there and discount their services, or they go to put something out into the market and they scan to see what everybody else is doing. Yes. Like somehow you are the same as everybody else. You're not. Your program is priced on the value that you give people. And so when you price it, two things have to happen. You have to believe in the value and you have to believe in the result. Whether you're charging $25 or $2,500, if you're not in alignment with that, you will never be able to sell it. And people that you speak to are going to pick up that vibe immediately. You know, people buy your confidence. You have to be confident in the result and the pricing of your product. So when you said $88 without knowing anything about your program, I'm like, I bet this is a good program. I want to know more about it. But if I said to you, Susan, go out and sell that for $2,500 a month. If you're not there, you will never be able to sell it. Even if it's worth $2,500 because you don't value it in that same way, right? So your brain has to be in alignment. And to your point, as your belief grows and your value grows, you can raise your price. That's what we do, right? People think of pricing as this stagnant thing that never changes, but it evolves as you evolve and the value evolves. The other piece of it is exactly what you said, Susan. As business owners, we have a strategy. Is your $88 program your signature offer? Is it an entry offer? Like what is the goal for the people and for your funnel with that offer? Because there's a whole strategy into how you bring all of these people in. Right. So that's important too. Like, do you want to price it at $2,500 or $88? But what sells is your belief in the result and your ability to tell people that even if sometimes you're scared, right? Sometimes I take my scared self, depending on who I'm talking with and say, Jess, get in the back seat. We're going anyway. It's like me and my fear, we're moving, right? Because you're in enough belief and in faith that you're going where you need to go. I would love to talk to you more about this, but I want to be respectful of everybody's time. Um, I'm going to read quickly what's in the chat here for, yeah, for sure. you. Um, Amanda says she's guilty of doing that, that she looks at everyone else's charging and it gets her, hold on, I went one way. Uh, it gets her nowhere. She said, thanks for the PSA. <laughs> and Nancy says, agreed. She would, she would only add, go higher. She added 30% to a proposal the night before she sent it. And guess what? The client didn't even flinch. Yep. Yeah. Because you stepped into belief around that price. Yes. Yeah. I don't think I've ever coached someone to lower their price. I think if you really want to like push yourself into that place, play to your edge, like push your price to the edge. You don't want to be in a tizzy panic, right? Cause that's not going to work. But oftentimes we play small, like we discount, we hold ourselves back because we think somehow that's going to make it a no brainer. Belief is a no brainer. Like being in belief and explaining to your client why you, why now, why this, that seals the deal. I love that. Why you, why now, why this? So yeah. good. Uh, Nancy um, says, play to your edge. Yes. Mm -hmm. Nancy's with Athena Wise and she helps women step into their power as well. So honored to be with these powerful women today. I know that you have an event coming up. 
Yes. I want to give you a minute or so to talk about that. Yeah. So speaking of playing to our edge. (laughs) So um, in my experience and in my experience with my clients, the fourth quarter of the year has always been the most powerful. And for people that are highly driven, like all of you watching, and they want to meet their goals and they want to finish their year strong, the fourth quarter is that time to really double down on yourself. And so I've created an event. I have it every year in the last, um, you know, last quarter of the year, which is called the fourth quarter comeback. And it's really focused on stepping into the person that you need to be to finish your year strong, to go after the things that you want, to hit the goals that you want. It is not too late. And to really make money right now and set yourself up into the new year already with momentum and making money and creating the business that you want. And so it's happening October 22nd and 23rd. It's two days from 930 to two and it's $97 and all are welcome. Um, It's going to be fun. It's going to be inspirational. We have an incredible lineup of speakers um, and I just can't wait to really bring that energy and bring people into that energy. We were talking about Susan, where you are so capable of creating everything you want. It may just be a tiny tweak or a tiny plan that you need to put in place to really get you into that place to really soar into the next year. And I just feel like we need it more than ever in 2020. (laughs) So, so I hope to see you all there 